stream it. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah, Dr. Nurul Akila uh, from UMT. Are you available? Uh, perfect. I can see you, Doctor. Prof. Jalal, I can see you as well. No problem at all. Good. Alaikum, Dr. Akbar. Thank yes, you. Yes, Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, it's audible, Doctor. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Maybe we can wait for another one more minute for the participants to join. Just one minute. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I think it is a better time to start. Assalamu uh, alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Respected speakers, invited speakers, and the brothers and sisters, the uh, the admin people, and everyone. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Once again, we will start our session with uh, Surah Al Fatiha. So without further ado, do, and uh, would like to start the session, we have two presenters here, uh, Dr. Nurul Akila from University of Malaysia, Tranganu, and Professor Ahmad Jalal Khan Chaudhary from uh, International Islamic University, Malaysia. Both of them are going to present on the theme on um, uh, COVID and aquaculture, what exactly the COVID has done to the aquaculture field. And recently we came to know that about 33% of the uh, the people who are engaging in the aquaculture industry lost their job because of the COVID pandemic. So with this uh, background, I would like to invite Dr. Nurul Akila. Each presenter will present about 15 to 20 minutes, followed by the question answer session for another 10 more minutes. So uh, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Nurul Akila. Uh, I would like to also introduce Dr. Noor Akhila. She is currently an assistant professor at University of Malaysia, Tanganu. She did her PhD at uh, University of Aberdeen, um, Scotland, and her master was from University of Malaysia, Tanganu, and uh, undergraduate was from University of Malaysia, Sabah. 
So she is a mycologist. Uh, so without further, the floor is yours, Dr. Shah. Yeah, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you, moderator Dr. Akbar, for the introduction. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen first. Okay. Uh, so uh, the theme um, of, of this webinar is about uh, aquaculture and COVID-19, right? And so for my sharing today, um, I would like to relate that uh, with fish health point of view. So my title for today is Future Threats to Aquaculture Food Production uh, with uh, my point of view as aquatic uh, mycologist. And uh, my name is Nuru Akila Ibrahim, and I'm a lecturer in Faculty of Fisheries and Food Science. Okay, uh, so for this uh, sharing session, uh, there are a few key messages here that I want to uh, deliver. So the first one is uh, uh, fisheries and aquaculture are important for food security. And the second one is aquatic animal diseases uh, can treat uh, treat uh, aquaculture uh, food production, <clears throat> can threaten aquaculture food production. Okay, and uh, so the main aim of fisheries and aquaculture is to get the protein source for their nutrients and also for food. And so maintaining uh, the long term production and supply of such food from both wild capture fisheries and aquaculture is a significant and ongoing challenge. So production has to be sufficient, safe and nutritious to meet immediate needs and preference. But uh, it also has to be environmentally and socially and economically sustainable to provide uh, for the long term. So uh, there, uh, there are five elements of uh, food security, okay? So there is uh, five elements. So the aquatic food security is achieved uh, when a food supply is sufficient, safe, uh, sustainable, shockproof, and also sound. So uh, food supply, <coughs> okay. Uh, so for the food supply, uh, need to meet the needs and preference of the people, okay? So for the safe, uh, uh, is to provide the nutritional benefits uh, while posing minimal health risks and for the sustainable to provide food now and also uh, for the future generations and for the shock proof to provide uh, the resilience to shock in production systems and supply chains and also for the sound and to meet legal and um, ethical standards for welfare for animal peoples and also environment. And for COVID-19, uh, uh, so how is COVID-19 affecting uh, the fisheries and aquaculture food system? So COVID-19 has affected all the processes uh, which connect from the farm, uh, uh, farm production to the final consumer. So mostly by supply and change uh, production, okay? Uh, so uh, such travel restric uh, restrictions uh, that current happening in Malaysia have affected um, every stages of food supply chain with a uh, major, major impact on food uh, distribution. Okay, uh, so there are a few issues and challenges in aquaculture even before uh, COVID-19. So uh, the issue first with national environmental issue and also fish stock depletion. So uh, national environmental issues uh, such as like uh, monsoon season and also flooding in Malaysia and for the fish stock uh, depletion uh, is uh, mainly referred to the uh, capture, capture fisheries. So when the capture fisheries uh, production decreasing uh, because of massive exploitation or overfishing and also uh, because of the pollution and also foreign vessels encroachment into Malaysian water. So uh, since the capture fisheries uh, production decreasing, uh, so the wild uh, fish uh, price may increase 
that further drive the rapid growth of aquaculture. So aquaculture is in challenge to support uh, the supply and demand. And the second issue is diseases that affected uh, culture species. And the third one is um, the non-compliance towards halal aquaculture. So uh, this unethical feeding practice in halal uh, perspective. So I think uh, this issue uh, was when Malaysia aquaculture fish were found fed with a uh, resource from animal protein or uh, animal byproduct that originated from animal, especially pig. Okay, and also uh, the last one, uh, the issue and challenges is from uh, media influences. So uh, media uh, influences uh, towards aquaculture. So I think uh, for this one, uh, we can relate with what happened last year regarding the risk of viral transmission uh, indicated that COVID-19 uh, originated from a live animal and seafood market uh, in Wuhan, China. So uh, this led to the decrease, uh, decreased consumption of aquatic animal in some countries. And uh, for this session, for this uh, sharing session, I would like to further explain about uh, disease issue. Okay, uh, for a disease situation to exist, uh, there, should, uh, there should be a, pot a potential uh, pathogen. So it's uh, the agent. So pathogen can be um, virus, parasite, uh, fungus, and also bacteria, and also a susceptible host, uh, and also the environment condition that bring the increase uh, the virulence of the pathogen, the agent, or uh, can decrease uh, the resistance uh, of the host. Uh, so this is uh, the epidemic triangle. So if we relate, uh, if we relate uh, that uh, triangle with COVID-19, so we also need uh, the three main points. Uh, so we still need have uh, the agent. Um, the agent is the pathogen, the SARS-CoV virus, and also we need uh, we still need uh, the host, uh, the people, uh, the people, and also the environment here. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> So for uh, COVID-19 to happen, so it needs uh, requires a susceptible host, which can be any non-immune person, uh, but especially a person who has risk factors such as uh, older age or having a pre-existing health condition to cause severe diseases or death, and also the viruses. Okay, uh, so the virus must be present in sufficient number to cause uh, an infection, and the virus must be viable. And also for the environmental condition here, uh, that increase uh, uh, the possibility of the infection, such as like uh, gathering in crowd, uh, just being near another person who is infectious, or uh, we touch objects that contaminated with virus, uh, uh, also can uh, lead to the infection. Okay, uh, so for fish, uh, so if we also relate uh, the triangle for fish disease, uh, so we still need a host, a fish, a fish or any farm uh, aquatic animal uh, that can be either resistant or susceptible to a given disease. Uh, so this host um, depends on the age or size of the host organism, the species, uh, the susceptible species and also uh, involve the defense uh, mechanism and also uh, the health condition of the fish, uh, including its uh, nutritional state. And then for the pathogen, so it's the same like human. Uh, we also have uh, four kind of uh, main pathogen. Those are viruses, bacteria, fungi, and also parasites. Okay, and so uh, the major characterization of the infectious agent normally uh, capability for direct transmission and also uh, able to multiply in the host tissue. Okay, uh, so for the third one is the environment. Okay, uh, so the environment of cultured fish uh, is composed of the water and its holding system like uh, tanks, ponds, cages, pens, um, etc. So uh, because uh, fish is a poor kilothermic organism, so the fluctuation in temperature, pH or salinity or even DO uh, uh, can lead to stress and also disease. Okay, uh, if, uh, so for human, we have uh, WHO, right, to handle uh, the human diseases. And for uh, animal, we have a World Organization for Animal Health, or also known as OIE. 
So OIE has played uh, a key role uh, in its capacity as the sole international reference organization for animal health. And it is uh, uh, their four main aim. Okay, uh, so they have like improving uh, animal health, uh, sharing uh, the information uh, on the animal disease uh, situation worldwide, and also um, uh, collecting and analyzing the scientific information and also develop uh, solidarity uh, in terms of uh, animal diseases in the world. Okay, uh, so for OIE uh, listed diseases in 2021, uh, so uh, OIE have listed around 117 uh, animal diseases and infections. And so the animal is uh, consists of terrestrial and also aquatic. And so for aquatic, it's covered for fish, crustaceans, mollusks, and also amphibians. Okay, um, so uh, okay, uh, so uh, we can get the listed disease uh, in aquatic animal health code. And so uh, in case of any modification of the listed diseases, uh, so uh, uh, OIE uh, will uh, renew uh, the list uh, every year. Uh, so we can get uh, the new list on every 1st January of uh, the new year. Okay. Uh, um, <clears throat> so uh, this is the listing uh, criteria. Okay. Uh, so to be uh, in the list of OIE uh, list of diseases, so need to fulfill uh, this listing criteria. Uh, so first, uh, uh, that, disease, uh, that disease can produce significant production losses or likely to negatively affect why uh, aquatic animal population or the agent uh, is a public health concern and also infectious etiology proven or an infectious uh, agent is strongly associated with the disease and can be uh, international spread and also uh, not all country uh, have this disease, okay? And also repeatable and robust uh, means of detection of diagnosis. Okay, uh, so for fish diseases and infections, uh, there are 10 that have uh, been listed. Uh, by OIE. Uh, as you can see uh, in the box, uh, the listed fish diseases are mainly from virus. Okay? Uh, the blue box is from virus. And also then uh, one from monogenian parasite, uh, Garodactyla salaris. And another one with yellow box is um, from aphanomyces nuidans. So what is the type of pathogen for aphanomyces? Okay, uh, so aphanomyces uh, evidence is an omycid. Okay, uh, if you have heard about omycid before, so omycid is also known as um, a fungal like organism or also false fungi. Okay, uh, so it's uh, different from uh, true fungi. So, uh, as you can see, this phylogeny of eukaryote, uh, phylogenetic phylogenetic tree of eukaryote. So uh, this one is a uh, fungus or true fungi. So fungi also, uh, we call them as eumycid uh, or eumycota. So eumycid means like true fungi. And for the other one, omycid. Uh, so omycid is a false fungus. So it's uh, different uh, from true fungi. <clears throat> okay, uh, so um, as you can see here that omycid is under kingdom straminophiles. Uh, yes, Raminophis, and, and it's more related uh, to uh, diatoms and uh, brown algae compared to true fungi that are more really uh, related to animals. Okay. And uh, the similarity uh, of uh, omycid and also uh, um, omycid and you might uh, see uh, the true fungi and the false fungi is that they are both eukaryote and also uh, the uh, body uh, and their body is composed of mycelium. Okay, uh, so uh, mycelium is uh, organized hyphae network. So one, uh, one of this one is called as hyphae. So uh, the network of hyphae is called as mycelium. So this one, uh, uh, this omycid on ega is called as uh, uh, the hyphae on ega uh, is the accumulation of hyphae. 
Okay, um, so they have uh, the differences such as uh, the hyphae ar architecture. So uh, for all my seat, uh, for all my seat here, uh, you can see that the hyphae is acidic uh, and sinusitic tubular hyphae, and they don't have any compartment. So they are smooth uh, hyphae compared to true fungi. So this one is true fungi. Uh, so this true fungi, uh, the uh, hyphae arch architecture have uh, compartment. Okay, uh, or we call that as a uh, septic uh, hyphae. Okay, and also uh, the cell wall composition of both is different. So for uh, for all my seed is cellulose. Uh, the uh, cell wall carbohydrate is from cellulose, but for true fungi, uh, is from chitin. And also, as you can see the picture on agar here. Uh, so for all my seed, mostly uh, in white in color. Okay, because uh, all my seed uh, don't have any pigmentation uh, on the hyphae. But for uh, true fungi, uh, the pigmentation is very common. So you can see uh, some of the true fungi color is green, black, or brown. So they have uh, a lot of color compared to all my seed. So uh, we can uh, 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 check that uh, by uh, the preliminary uh, identification by using the macromorphology. So we can check if uh, the fungus has pigmentation or not. Uh, so we back to US outbreak. Uh, so US also uh, endemic to a wide range of uh, freshwater and brackish water, uh, brackish habitats uh, globally. Okay. Um, and in this map, uh, the countries are labeled uh, in colors according to the decade of their first uh, aphanomycin avanomyc infection outbreak. Okay, uh, so this disease uh, was first described uh, here in Japan in 1971. Uh, so since then, uh, outbreak of US have become more frequent and have disseminated worldwide. And also Malaysia have uh, the first infection in 1979. Okay, uh, so uh, back to this triangle of disease. Uh, so for US, uh, successful invasion and establishment of US in fish uh, requires uh, the tissue, uh, the epithelial damage. So this is the uh, the fish that has been infected with US. So uh, for this triangle, we need a host, which is susceptible uh, fish species, and also environmental condition uh, that favor the sporulation and of, uh, of the fungi. So uh, the mode of transmission uh, for this disease is by horizontal. So uh, the infectious agents uh, come in contact with the host through water, the feet of through carrier animals, uh, they are in uh, this environment. Okay, uh, so this is uh, the common infected fish uh, for US. Okay, uh, so uh, mostly uh, China species and uh, Puntius. Uh, where is Puntius? Okay, uh, so China and Puntius are being affected the most, and generally, uh, the bottom uh, dwelling fish seem to be highly uh, susceptible compared to other fish. So uh, this listed fish is also um, available in Malaysia. Okay, uh, so uh, this is the typical life cycle of all my seed. Okay, uh, but uh, it depend on uh, so for this so, uh, sporangium structure, it depend on the species. Okay, uh, so uh, typically uh, the life cycle it consists of asexual and also sexual. So after release, uh, the sporangia here. The primary zoospore immediately insists uh, at the apical tips. Okay, uh, so this one uh, for aphanomyces invadens. So for aclea and aphanomyces, uh, the structure is quite uh, similar. So this one is typical life cycle for uh, another uh, animal pathogen called as uh, Saprolignia parasitica. So, uh, okay. Uh, <coughs> Okay, uh, so from here, uh, from the mycelium, uh, in favorable, favorable condition, uh, the sporangium uh, will produce the spore. And then at some point, uh, it will release uh, to the environment and produce 
primary zoospore, primary cis, and then uh, to secondary zoospore. Okay, uh, so from secondary zoospore, uh, it's transformed into a gemling. Okay, uh, by forming a gemming uh, a germination tube here. Yeah? Okay, so uh, which uh, eventually will uh, back to the mycelium. Okay, so once a uh, secondary zoospore here. Yeah? cyst has developed so it can follow two pathway uh, if the cyst uh, does not attach uh, to the host uh, the cyst can uh, release a new zoospore uh, so this is a repeated uh, a repeated emergence so we also call this as uh, polyplanetism and so this one uh, this polyplanetism function uh, to provide um, another opportunity to locate a host Okay, uh, so for the sexual uh, reproduction begins uh, with the uh, production of male and female uh, gametangium, so which are uh, enteridium and ogonium. So enteridium is a male uh, gamete and also ogonium is uh, the female gamete. So uh, they fuse together through a fertilization tube and then uh, will form a, a zygote. So this one uh, is a zygote from or my seed, so we call that as uh, ospor. Okay, uh, so this is uh, the zoospore formation of aphanomyces in the So uh, the zoospore will uh, form at the apical tips uh, of hyphae. So this form is uh, also known as a structure. So um, I have a video here. So this is a zoospore formation and release um, at the uh, uh, apical tips uh, of the hyphae. So you can see uh, this uh, the spore moving. Okay, uh, so for this one uh, is uh, the primary zoospore starts uh, to swimming away from the acleot structure. Okay, uh, so uh, for the fungus, uh, uh, for the omycid, uh, uh, to make uh, the infection, so this is uh, the mood of infection. Okay, uh, so this is uh, omycid, aphanomycid invadence on agar. So you can see that they are not uh, pigmented. Okay, uh, for this one, uh, so from uh, the zoospore or secondary zoospore release, so they will find uh, the susceptible host to attach uh, on the fish body or the fish skin, and then will penetrate uh, into the fish muscle. So uh, the spore uh, will produce uh, a prosorium to penetrate into the fish muscle. And then uh, from the prosorium, uh, they will form a hastorium um, to uh, release uh, the effective protein uh, uh, of uh, omycid. So, <clears throat> Okay, uh, so they are attracted, uh, so for the omycid, they are attracted to the their host, uh, uh, especially on the damaged uh, skin. And also uh, uh, we can see uh, the clinical signs uh, after uh, a few hours of the spore penetration. So the underlying hafe, uh, uh, the underlying hafe here, so the invasive hafe, will make uh, the quality of a flesh uh, from uh, the infected infected fish is uh, really poor. Okay, uh, so this is uh, the typical US clinical sign. So we can see uh, the ulcers, um, ulcerative lesion, and also red spot. Okay, uh, so these signs um, can be used as a presumptive diagnosis for US on infected fish. And the observation of acetic hyphae in squash uh, preparation of the muscle and uh, also can be observed when we uh, squash uh, the, uh, the muscle here, the infected area. 
Okay, uh, so uh, this is a US outbreak during COVID pandemic. Uh, so this was happened in uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Okay, uh, so uh, it was happened last year on March uh, during uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So, um, so to have US during COVID pandemic is really bad, okay? So, because for EUS, uh, we will have like high mortality and also affect the fish uh, appearance. And for the aquaculture during uh, COVID-19, also need to fulfill uh, consumer demands and also uh, will, uh, the aquaculture production also uh, decrease. Okay, so this uh, can give effect uh, to the aquaculture food production. And what can we do uh, is to try uh, to minimize the infection uh, as many as we can. So a number of simple uh, biosecurity here uh, measure can minimize or prevent the spread of EUS. Because for EUS, uh, we don't have any uh, proven treatment yet. Okay, so uh, for for time being, we need to avoid or minimize uh, the spread of EUS. So such as uh, the US infected fish should not be thrown back to the open water or disposed properly. So uh, by uh, bringing them into the ground and also uh, additional practical uh, biosecurity like good water quality management, uh, proper handling of fish and also regular monitoring of fish health and also uh, because uh, this disease is also in OIE uh, listed diseases for fish. So uh, the uh, Department of Fisheries Malaysia also need to uh, report and notify OIE uh, if this disease happened in Malaysia. Okay, uh, so that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Nurul. Uh, I would like to open the floors for the question and answers. If there is any question, you can unmute your phone, uh, mic and then please proceed. If there is any question from the audience. State your name and which uh, university are you from? Then you can ask the question. If not, I have a question, doctor. Uh, regarding this, um, my, I mean, the fungal-based um, disease, during uh, the COVID pandemic here in Malaysia, is there any uh, reports on the, the disease itself? Uh, you mean in Malaysia? Malaysia, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so far, uh, there have not have been any reported, uh, uh, mainly for EUS. Uh, so I think for DOF, uh, they have mainly uh, only for bacteria and also virus. So for the fungus, it's not uh, really a case here, an issue in Malaysia so far as of now. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Okay, thank you. I think if there is, people are still joining by the way for the second presentation. So if there is any other, uh, no other question, Okay, there is one question in the chart uh, from Nurul Akila. What's your view about the SARS-CoV-2 infection in fish and aquaculture? Uh, I think the author, uh, I mean, the questioner mean saying that whether it's having some economic problem because of the, uh, the infection in the fishes itself. Uh, Professor Salam, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe you can unmute and ask the question directly. You can unmute. Hello. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nurul Akila, for the uh, uh, brief uh, presentation on uh, mycology, and that's a good revisit for me as a parasitologist and microbiologist, the, some basic areas in microbiology, uh, mycology. But uh, uh, my uh, query is that uh, how this, uh, you know, this uh, COVID-19 uh, 
as Dr. Akbar mentioned, you know, is directly or indirectly affecting this, you know, fish and aquaculture. And also, is there any possibility that the virus can itself cause infection to the fish or aquaculture itself? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Salam, uh, for the question. Uh, so your question is uh, either SARS-CoV uh, uh, can infect fish or not, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so um, SARS-CoV actually, uh, uh, their primary targets is for respiratory tract uh, with the pathology of most consequence in the lung. So fish do not have lungs, okay, uh, with the exception of lung fish. And therefore, I think uh, that uh, this SARS-CoV-2 therefore not susceptible to the uh, not susceptible to the fish, okay? Uh, because uh, fish breathe through gills that attracts the DO uh, dissolved oxygen from water. But uh, um, so uh, what happened was in Wuhan last year. I think uh, it's contaminated maybe from the person that infected with the virus instead of from the fish itself. So yeah, that's uh, my answer. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, actually, there is no, uh, you know, question to believe that uh, this was transmitted from the infected fish on the first place, right? From one. Sorry, that's it. So, so the, the, there is there is no, you know, uh, issue to believe that uh, the infected fish was the source to transmit the COVID-19 from Wuhan in the first place. Oh, okay. Yeah, true. So right. uh, the media speculation that uh, uh, that virus is come from Wuhan. So that's why uh, I used that example. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Doctor. Thank you, doctor. The, I think because of the time uh, limitations, I have to move on to the second presenter, Professor Ahmad Jalal Khan Chaudhuri from uh, Faculty of Science, uh, Department of Marine Science, um, International University Malaysia. Uh, he, his presentation is on COVID-19. It was actually presented before in Asia Pacific uh, World Congress. So, uh, because I have seen this presentation before and it was full of information, that's why I invited Prof. Jalal to give and share the information with others as well through our webinar series. So, uh, he was uh, graduated uh, his PhD on aquaculture biotechnology from UPM, University of Putra, Malaysia. Now it's already UMT uh, and so on. And his master degree was from the same university as well. And the bachelor was from the uh, uh, Bangladesh Aquaculture Uni uh, Agricultural University. So uh, he has uh, more than 100 publications and uh, many more to say so. And he's also a member and uh, a keynote speaker on the aquaculture and COVID-19 for many of the invited, invited speakership. So without further, I would like to ask the Prof. Jalal to share his screen and then move on. Sankum, can you see Dr. Akbar? Yes, Prof, it's visible, uh, but maybe you may have to increase your voice. Okay. Yeah, <coughs> I will try. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning, uh, distinguished audience. Thank you, Dr. Akbar, this uh, chairperson of this webinar session, uh, especially, uh, I mean, uh, this, uh, you are inviting me for this session. Okay. And then actually today, I'm going to present on the impacts of COVID on aquaculture and fisheries in Malaysia and its recovery and mitigation strategies. So that means I will cover both fisheries and aquaculture so that a lot of you can see some information and strategies. Okay, first of all, I want to convey my salute to, to Honorable His, His Majesty King of Malaysia, Honorable Prime Minister and DG Health for the utmost effort for reducing the spread of COVID-19 in Malaysia since 2020. So, uh, okay, let's go to the things now. You can see now the FO actually first, if you reported on April 20, the pandemic uh, that has directly impacted on fisheries and aquaculture based products on many countries of Asian regions, which are among the top producers, exporters, and importers of fish and fishery products in Asia and Pacific. 
many countries are putting in place unprecedentedly. And then uh, they actually, the lockdown measures designed to control its impact on public health. So what happened there, you can see significant imp impacts on the food and nutrition security, jobs, livelihoods, and potential social unrest, serious consequences for fish and seafood trade. So I will, do, I will let you know the existing impacts eh, the, on the, due, due to COVID on the fishing communities in Malaysia, what actually they're facing also, you should know, eh, because they are the most our source of uh, suppliers. So you can see the lockdown of the major concerns. Eh? First of all, what happened? The bans and travel restriction, you can see the picture right side. I give you the evidence on national and international air and land travels, complete or partial closures of hotel restaurants, disruptions of uh, transportation, less people in local markets, Domestic distribution of seafood products was slowed down by logistical difficulties. And you can see even though people giving the fish, uh, your fish on buying fish, but there's an obstacle there. Blockage of transport routes due to police roadblocks. Particularly the case of small and medium sized entrepreneurs. Actually they are affected mostly. Eh? And then mostly another problem is most European importers, they're giving orders first, okay? And then, it, which is insecure because for the Asian fish traders, they're giving always low value and then suddenly they change their order. So a big loss for the exporters from Malaysia. Then also fishermen, sometimes they feel it. That's why Dr. Jasno Akila said that there was a scaring of the virus, maybe fish, but it's not that one, but still they scare. So it affects the reduced demand of fishes, effects on daily income and health of small scale fishes, especially women vendors who are highly dependent on the selling fresh fishes from their boats. You can see they, they take the fish, then they dry and they're on the spot. They cannot come to the market during, I'm talking about last year when there too much lockdown was intensive. Also, there was another things you can see imposed movement to the control to led to significant lower Ali, price. Of do you want to see how the is Sorry? Sorry? Can you see? Let's proceed, Prof. Uh, I think uh, there is some uh, someone unmuted. You okay. may proceed. Okay, okay. So uh, small kill species also affected. And then especially, you know, those, I'm talking about the others in function of the Sabah and others are uh, coastal in East Coast. They're staying far away from the main uh, economic activities area. So that means during the lockdown, it was observed that 50 to 70 percent lower than the price before the movement of the restriction period. You see, it's too lost their economic, uh, I mean, condition. You can see they lost uh, too much uh, during this uh, situation. And if you see the information from the Malaysian show Fisherman Action Network, Zaring, eh, in the 28th March, they mentioned also that the fishermen don't want to go for fishing uh, because you can see the lot of boats here. They, they don't want to because they said. There's no customers, and then uh, they buy, buy a lot of fish. They bring, and then they cannot sell, so cannot. So even though they don't want to see the, they want to go to the uh, for fishing. So it's a huge uh, effect on the exports last time last year. So what you can see that reduced demand and closures of major global markets have stopped or greatly reduced international trades in fish products, especially for high-valued fishes. And this is one of the high-valued fishes, which is very, I mean, we call. Uh, ikan tenggiri or Spanish mackerel, just 12 ringgit per kg instead of before it was 25 to 30 ringgit. So during this one, so it is a big loss also for the fishermen during the COVID. And the customers, mostly the general customers, still seek only the commonly consumed fishes like scarce and tunas compared to high value fishes because they're easily available. And they go for the these sort of fishes. I can give you the pictures of the right side. That's the most common fishes during the COVID time. Uh, so, <clears throat> so in this movement control also affects on the freshwater fishes and fisher industry and also shell fishes because you know this type of fishes shell fishes normally selling uh, is, is supplied to the restaurant you know seafood restaurants and this red, seafood restaurant was closed so it's affected to the lower business and you can see even though they are throwing these things or oh, outside the I mean uh, from the boat so. Sava, I think this one of the important area Malaysia for the seafood is Sabah is one of the most beautiful places for uh, for this tourist country, tourism because you can see the pictures I right side this is Sabah 
So what happened that from the Northeast Asia, especially South Korea and China, those people come here for especially for the instead of viewing scenery, also for the food, seafood. And this all these are closed during that time. So big loss there, those those areas. I mean the economic booming was lost there. And fishermen said that it is hard for them to sell fish because of their customers are the restaurant and fish factory owners, but they don't want to buy because their, their restaurants are closed. So this is also, we got the information from Kudat middlemen from fisheries on the 9th April from last year. This is from them information. All interview middlemen also based in coastal areas uh, of Sabah claim that since the starting of MCO, they have yet to make a profit from the business, They're losing and losing. So, okay, now you can see now that what actually affects, potential impacts on COVID on aquaculture. Actually, some of the information I tell you, those who are not in aquaculture area, demand for fish in Malaysia actually was among the world highest eh, with 59 kg per capita, according to FAO 2016. And Malaysia greatly depends on this seafood production sector. You can see mostly our Malaysian uh, in the market, Pasar Tanya, uh, seafood, sea fish. So some information also I want to share here for, the, uh, for everybody. Malaysia coastal community rely actually totally heavily on the source of income on the aquaculture. And most of the enterprises, you can see 78% with the agriculture sector, including aquaculture, are considered micro and small size enterprises. Aquaculture sector contribute 9% of Malaysia gross domestic products. And it is also represent about 20% of the total seafood production. And you know, in the 19, 2017, you can see 1.69 million metric ton of the total aquaculture production we found. And this is the C. And also you can see 2017, how much people are involved in aquaculture. 21,156 full-time aquaculturists. And then uh, they are providing employment 140,000 people involved. So what happened, you can see now. So, I mean, this is actually uh, the production, Malaysia. First is leg, white leg shrimp is highest, then the for, subsequently tilapia and giant tiger prawn. You can see right side pictures is so beautiful and delicious. Huh? Okay, so this is the overall their production and so but all effects during this year, last year because of the export problems. So what happened here, you can see information according to the Department of Statistics Malaysia uh, that 79.1% that of the farmers and fishers explain income reduction. Just now Dr. Agbo said maybe 30%, but actually it is 79.1% farmers affected for their economic, everybody got. Significant effect on the value chain factors, a large, especially the ladies, women who are involved also affect on this uh, matter. And then aquaculture, you know, aquaculture need bidding operations. So seasonal tax, the bidding operation was affected because if they bid, if they produce these fish, where they sell. So that's the another big problem. You can see the fish they're selling in the beach because market nobody there. So what happened to value chain related fisheries and aquaculture products? So you can see that because of due to closure of the border, certain fish are caught mainly for export, cannot be transported. So it is goes to the domestic area and domestic also MCO. So you see, there's no chance. Fish is here, a lot of fish is here, but no, no customers, they cannot sell. Then, then just they dry and sell. So what happened? Impacts on aquaculture at a glance. I tell you, this is the overall. Eh? Reducing the target of desired production, strict information of restriction, what happened to the effects on the Workers, workers, they lose their jobs, effect of supply of farm inputs such as feed and seed, loss the employee in aquaculture farms, drastic reduction of fish price, and farm fishes could not sell to the customers due to the lack of transportations. Also, aquaculture farms supplying the live fish market or high-end food services, restaurants, tourism, all also dramatically impact. And uh, this one, you can see the fresh fish, eh? the leaders of the catfish, prawns, fresh water fish cannot do because of the cannot do the activities due to the no demand from restaurants. Movement control is also outside the impacts on fisheries industry along the markets and uh, because and especially the fresh fish and shellfish. So many farmers who have been unable to sell their harvest maintain the large quantity of live fish in their farm. Can you believe it and how much they have to pay but no income. Also effect on aquaculture have varied with region species. Different species have different value. They also lost the cost of this one. So increased cost and risk in particular when the supply of inputs has been disrupted, it delays the stocking eh, of subsequent harvests. 
So what you can see, I will show you overall pictures. Easy for you. Okay, this is the normal supply. Yeah? This is normal supply when before COVID. And you can see after COVID, what happened? Everything is closed. Importers go to processors. Processors cannot go. So they cannot go to processors. Processors cannot go to producer. Producer produce fishes and fishes, but they cannot go this side. All closed side. So disruption of supply chain. So what happened overall? If when disruption of supply chain, you see threatened supply chain, affected operational capacity, reduced trade closures of borders, and all this, everybody, all the farmers, I mean, even the export traders also goes to domestic market. And domestic market, they have no customers. So it is happening. If, if it is I mean, information, actually, this is mostly from last year, but you can see now also slow down customers less, even though lockdown not like severe like last year, but still customers not there. So it is the overall situation. So you can see now, even though Malaysia aquaculture sector has begun to decrease, even to Singapore, 50% decrease in mid-February 2020, because of the cargo, others cannot go. And then even though the boat from Hong Kong and China cannot enter to bring back say, all the fishes and then shrimps and other seafoods. So total blocks the revenue from this area Malaysia losing last year until now. So what happened? So it's that not that we have problems. Of course, government and fishery industry, they're doing some measures. You can see now, so promoting local consumption of export products that have lost their markets and have been developing online, online marketing platform. Now it started so that they can sell. Government have been providing assistance. They give some financial assistance to producers. Also, they're giving some price stabilization scheme so that they restock the essential farm inputs. And interesting, you know, the fishing boat owners, in 50 fishing boat owners in Kuantan, you maybe saw some people who don't know, because I got from fishermen, they told me, they give free 7,000 kilograms of fish to the, the neighborhood people's area. It is a Kuantan Sepat site. So can you believe it? So they also try to help. 50 fish in one not few days, they sell fish. They give fish without, just free, not to take any money. LKM also selling their fishes and fishermen fish fish market. Aquaculture SMEs are eligible. Government gives some three months postponement of income tax installment payments now. And COVID-19 related donation also qualified. If, it, if anybody give donations, this is tax deductions. So this is also government giving now. Aquaculture sector comprises of mostly micro and SMEs are, these incentives are really set forth by the Malaysian government. So short, what is the short term, short medium term recovery mitigation? This is I got from fisheries department recently. So this is actually interesting. Issue one, fishery activities. The proactive dissemination of information through fishery state and district of fish. Every district of fish, they're going to get the information and through social media and they classify as an essential service so that fishery, one of the essential service now government want to put on. Disrupting in processing factories, distribution and supply chain to consumers. So the ministry, what happened? You see, joint interministerial committee. They they make it, which you call MAFI. Also, they make it a team and they make a collaboration with online shopping platforms to facilitate marketing of fresh produce through online services, so that control fish market can be located properly. So we can sell the fish. Issue three: restricted movement movement across society by informant officers means if fisheries people. The fish farmers want to sell, want to come, registered farms and farmers to be registered in the in the proper office, in the uh, police and other places, so that they can come, they can sell the fish. This is not like last year. So they, now it can, can do. Okay, what happened long term? Intensify mechanization and technology adoption. Increase budget allocation for agro food productions. Industrialization of agro food sectors and institutional structural reform. And according to this one, you can see the next five-year plan, what Malaysia five-year plan give overall. You can see here, left side, ensure sufficient, afford affordable, and safe fishery produce. This is one of the things is, which is COVID-related. And enhance fishery resource sustainability. They will not stop. Even though this happened, they're not stop, And they're planning to do more idea for that. They're not lost. Increase national economic contribution for fishery sector so that right side could be more information like this, eh? ecoculture, fresh and marine boat. So even though you can see the government doing this one, but recently we joined, uh, I joined with the NACA presentation. I told you just Dr. Aboy told me this one and also ASEAN fans. So I got, uh, we got a common recommendation together. So it's giving to in the global perspectives. So I will show you this one, what we decided. 
establish multiple supply chains and increase supply sources to sustain revenues under unexpected national economic loss. So it should be multiple supply chains, not only one. Post COVID-19 rapid study should be conducted to obtain a quick understanding of the food security and livelihood. This is important, the food security, just now Dr. Akila said. Establish national level platform, platform. We should not simply waiting and waiting and then, okay, this fisherman longer. We should have level, national level platform and promote production. Who can talk about this fisherman and this fish farm managers and aquaculture aspect? Because this is giving revenues to Malaysia. So this should be given priority. In order to sustain the overcome of the fishermen and fisheries, loss of economic revenue, not over dependent on single marketing channels. Provide interest free loans so that they can boost this. Uh, I mean, especially for the small and medium entrepreneurs, they can do their economic growth. Maintain steadiness of selling online, sell branded frozen fishery product also can. They can keep the frozen so that if they're locked down, they can sell this one and commercialize this product. Researchers on ocean policy, like you know, some others like this in the national level and all other countries, need to promote information on challenges to assist policymakers and stakeholders in effective way of overcoming COVID-19 and achieving sustainable fisheries. And international organizations like FAO, WHO, NACA, World Fish Center, they're planning. This is we probably mentioning, and also we their planning could provide short-term funds to potential sustainable goals flagship, which you IOM, IOM have for the university who, who fulfill the United Nations global sustainable objectives so that this can do some fish aquaculture sector uh, in, in, for the, in the long run. Conclusion, eh? you should, that's uh, my, uh, Dr. Prof. Salam just now asked question. Eh? This is actually aquatic animals. Do not play an epidemiological role in spreading COVID-19 to humans. This is already found in, in the NACA, FAO, they found a lot of study. Fish and fish products are a key component to healthy diets and are is safe to eat. A lot of misleading in perception actually in some countries that, oh, this, this is happening. China, they got problem, this one, this one. Uh, they come from the COVID-19 and their diet has come to that. No, actually, fish products can become infected if handled by people who are infected with the COVID-19, careful, eh? and who are not following good hygiene practices. So implement robust hygiene practices to protect fisheries and aquaculture workers and fish products from contamination, then you are safe. It's no problem at all. The fish products, you can get the fish because there's no chance for virus come to there until unless someone involved. The transparency in policy responses and regional international cooperation. We should have, every country should, should not be controlled in their own idea, should be transparent because it's a, it's a global problem and work together. This is we finalized during the NACA that everybody should come in time and share their idea so that this lesson further facilitate learning from the crisis to improve the sustainability and liveliness of fisheries and aquaculture. My acknowledgement, my appreciation to the Dean course, Dr. Shabuddin for inspiration meet for present this one, Asia Fan on October. Thankfulness to the also Dr. Akbar and uh, Dr. Fuad for inviting me during the webinar. I also grateful to Director General Naka FO and Deputy Director General LOC Fisheries for we shared the, our idea and all the recommendations together. We planned during this last year in November. My gratitude to also Department of Fisheries, News and NST, Burnama, Aquatrop, UMT, for all the giving idea. Malaysia Fisheries Society give me articles on idea information so that I present this fund together to give you some sharing what's happening in Malaysia in COVID aquaculture and fishery side. Thank you very much, distinguished uh, participant, for your attention so that I can feel now nice that I share you something. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much Prof, uh, for sharing the informative uh, presentation. We have two questions and I think you have already answered the first question that uh, was asked by Prof. In your opinion, is it possible that the fish price would be increasing due to higher demand if this pandemic ends soon? This is one of the questions. No, actually what happened now, if it is if fish price is higher, it's effect to the customers. And then if it is lower effect, so that's why, that's why I said that just now fisheries, Malaysia fisheries uh, ministry, they're planning to join together, impose their price so that they will get benefit. And then the, far the farmers, they will get their loan free and free interest so that they will not affect it. So it will not, the high price should be, it will be, price will be consistent. Oh. I think, uh, is there any other question from the audience?
if there is any question from the audience please unmute yourself and then post the question in the chat there is no question asked if there is any question if there is no question at all then uh, i would like to once again thank uh, both the presenters for accepting our invitation and the information that is shared by both the presenters are very informative we do have the live streaming of this webinar in youtube uh, the initial link is already shared and uh, further it will also be shared with the other members those who have attended uh, so that you can disseminate the information thanks again thanks once again to both the presenters as well as all the audience uh, one at the same time and thanks one and all Uh, we would like to end the session with tasbih uh, al-ghafara and surah an-nas subhanallah wa bihamdihi wa naqulu alhamdulillah wa shallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa anta as-sabbi wa atubu ilayhi bismillahirrahmanirrahim la'udhu bi nas malik an-nas la ilaha illa anta as-sabbi wa anta as-sabbi thank you thank you, thank you so much prof jalal and dr akila and to dr akila from umt we are from there thank you for inviting me as well okay Okay, bye. Okay. Looking forward for more. Assalamualaikum. Take care. Bye. What's you soon? <laughs> yeah, see you soon, bro. <laughs>